up here. That was great. I just wanted to give you a few instructions of how things are going to work tonight. So first of all, welcome. Glad to have you here. We're really excited to do this. Excited that we're live streaming. It's going to be fantastic. Um, we spent a lot of time making sure that we could do this and do it safely. And that means you all have to be wearing your mask, covering your nose and your mouth the whole time, and try to be keeping six feet apart the whole time, right? So let's see. Um, there's going to be a part during the ceremony where you're actually reciting part of the honor code. You're going to find that on page five in your program. You're going to be saying the part in bold out loud when we get there. When we've gotten through that, then we're going to begin the process of signing the Cadi book. So the way that's going to work is you're going to be following your row out to this direction. This direction. Okay. So you'll come up the stairs. When I say your name, you're going to come across the stage. Bring your pen with you so you can sign the book. We have two places for signing. So watch where the person in front of you went and go to the other one. Okay, it's okay to get started on the stage coming up behind the person who's ahead of you, but just make sure you're kind of staying back about six feet until they've actually left the podium and then you can go up and sign your name. All right. When you've signed, you're going to go across and get a daisy and then come back down these stairs and go back into your seat. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. When we get to the end of the program, you'll hear the alma mater. Sorry. <clears throat> Ordinarily, we would sing the alma mater, but singing is actually a high risk activity. So we're going to ask that you just listen. And in the future, we hope we're able to sing it. Uh, when we get down to the end of the program and you'll be leaving, make sure you take anything with you that you brought along because you're going to be exiting the auditorium. So Professor Spencer is going to come down. She'll be holding the mace. She'll be over here in the corner. You'll follow her out the other direction. So you'll be going this way out the rows and follow Professor Spencer and she'll lead you all the way out the building. Does anyone have any questions? Have fun. It's going to be a great night. Thank you. Oh, question. Yes. Um, do we need to memorize this? Or do we nope. Memorize you can just read it as you go. So you'll be reading from your seat. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so you're going to be you're going to be the very first one. Yeah, that's why I am. <laughs> so you're going to come up the stairs. Yeah, you want to come on up? So you're going to come up the stairs. I'll say your name. You're Chloe Kennedy, right? You're going to come up. I'll say Chloe Kennedy. You'll come. Why don't you start like on this farthest away one? You'll sign your name. Probably be good if we actually put the paper up there so they could sign. Okay. Yeah. Flip it over to the other side. There. And then you're going to grab a daisy and head down the stairs and then go right back into your row and sit down. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. And then Trinity. You'll come up and do this one. Caitlin, you'll hit that one, and so on. Does that make sense? It'll be easy once we get going, right? All right, have fun, everyone. In a few moments, you'll hear the music starting. That's the processional, and that'll be your signal that it's ready to time to stand up, and we're getting going, OK? Thank you.
students, faculty, staff, and friends of Cotty College, we are assembled here tonight for convocation, an annual celebration that ushers in the beginning of the new academic year. Through this special gathering, we welcome our newest students to Cotty College. Students, you have amazing potential. Potential to learn, potential to lead, potential to truly make a difference in the world ahead. This event is for you. This event is about you. Tonight, we invite you to take part in one of the most treasured and long-lasting traditions of this institution. And while the COVID-19 pandemic has necessitated some changes to this event, we are truly honored and delighted to welcome all of you here to our campus. To all of our friends, families, faculty, staff, and students who are joining us by live stream, welcome to Convocation 2020. We will begin our festivities this evening with the invocation delivered by the Reverend Erica Sagake, Coordinator of Spiritual Life and Campus Diversity. Please welcome Dr. Sagake. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator and sustainer of the universe, as we begin this new academic year, we gather once again not as a routine, but rather an intentional positive mindset for the common good. We thank you for the energy and spirit that you renewed in us throughout the summer months. May this year be marked by enthusiasm and love so that with the inspiration of your blessings, we may continue to grow while we explore our different goals and visions with confidence. Encompass this place and turn our lives in the direction that will connect us with the needs of our challenging world. Help us adapt well to the new regulations caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and give us the courage to persevere with hope. Fill us with your grace and touch the hearts of all our new students. Ignite your strength and an open spirit in them. Keep them calm, focused, and positive, and remind them they are never alone on this new journey. Grant us each day the desire to do our best, to grow mentally, morally as well as physically, to be kind and honest with ourselves as well as with others. Lord, bless our president, Dr. Whitesell, and all our leaders. Bless the staff and professors who give their hearts to teaching. Thank you for the special gifts you have given each of them and for giving them a spirit of grace and compassion. May they have strength and endurance to perform their many tasks. Prepare our hearts to receive the profound words of wisdom, hope, and encouragement from our honored speakers. May their words energize us and help sustain us. Keep your presence alive and continue to radiate among us throughout the year. Protect us and keep us watching over us all the time. Surround your, our families and friends with your grace and keep them faith, faith, with faith and safe. Be with us now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Sakake. Students, you may be seated. I would now like to introduce those people who are sharing the platform with me this evening. 
I will ask them both to stand and I'll introduce the people who are available backstage and I just ask that you please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. On my right is Sarah Rafferty, class of 2011 speaker for this evening. And next to her is Dr. Joanne Bangs, Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the Faculty. Off stage, due to social distancing, are Professor Theresa Spencer, College Marshal, and Reverend Erica Sagake, Coordinator of Spiritual Life and Campus Diversity, and our organist is Debbie Fast. Please greet these participants. Since 1935, Cotty has practiced a meaningful and unique tradition called signing of the Cotty book. The book itself is leather and the leaves are loose. The book is very fragile and the very first signatures are now quite pale. The signatures of you, our newest students, will be added to those pages tonight. As we open this, the 137th year of this historic institution, we celebrate the progress and the success of Cotty College. We look forward to the opportunities that this school year bring, and we, pro and we as we continue to divide our future and create incredible futures for you, our students. 2020 represents more than a century of educating women here at Cotty College. In 1884, Vernon Seminary, later to be renamed Cotty College, opened its doors for the very first time through the efforts of Virginia Alice Cotty, a true visionary. The Vernon Seminary was a day and boarding school for girls located on six acres of land in a cornfield. The city of Nevada did not have electricity and the students were shuttled from one place to the other in horse-drawn carriages. And just a few years after opening this college, an epidemic of scarlet fever hit the Nevada area requiring Cotty College to quarantine for two weeks. The college and its students, faculty, and staff prevailed against this epidemic thanks to Virginia Alice Cotty's dedication to protecting the many students of the college. And now, more than a century later, Cotty faces a, a familiar challenge. This year, the COVID-19 pandemic. The past few months have been difficult for all of us, requiring many of us to miss out on events that we've been looking forward to and requiring us to stay apart from, friend, from friends and family whom we hold dear. But despite the heartaches and the disappointments that you may have faced, a new chapter is beginning. You made your way to Cotty, and we are thrilled that you are here. And I am confident that with perseverance and by working together, we will not only triumph over these difficulties, but we will come out on the other side a better, stronger Cotty College. Throughout this challenge, and probably many more that we will face in our lifetimes, May we endeavor to be courageous and compassionate. Although Cotty College has undergone, undergone many changes since its inception, our mission has never changed. It's our mission to educate women and to give them the opportunity to receive an excellent education in a diverse and supportive environment taught and guided by faculty and staff members who have dedicated their professional careers to the education of women and to their futures. Our newest students, you, our students, are now joining the ranks of 
all of the women who came before. We are proud to be a liberal arts and sciences institution, one that offers students the opportunity to assemble a broad foundation of knowledge that can be used in a wide spectrum of careers and across a lifetime. When we engage in a liberal arts and sciences curriculum, we learn to think critically and to think creatively, to examine the world around us, to communicate effectively, to question for ourselves rather simply believing what someone else has told us to believe, to reason, to be problem solvers, to learn to apply the scientific method, to make ethical decisions, and to adjust to changing situations. All of these lessons will be valuable to our students, not only in the coming months, but for years and years to come. We are proud to offer outstanding degrees at both the baccalaureate and associate levels. We encourage all students to become engaged with the college, to take part in the many co-curricular activities, and to make friends that will last a lifetime. We welcome on our, our new students, and we welcome our returning students, and we wish everyone a healthy and successful academic year. We also welcome our faculty and staff to the 2021 academic year, for without them, CADI would not be the model of higher education, women's education that it is. It is now my pleasure to introduce our esteemed convocation speaker for this evening, Ms. Sarah Rafferty, who graduated from CADI in 2011. I encourage you when you have a moment to look into your program and read of her many accomplishments. Cotty is proud to recognize Sarah as an alumna because she represents the characteristics of a Cotty student. Intelligence, leadership, determination, perseverance, confidence, and someone who is not afraid to use her voice for the betterment of others. Please help me welcome tonight's speaker, Ms. Sarah Rafferty. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Weitzold, uh, faculty and staff for having me here. and welcoming me back home. I am humbled to be on this stage. Congratulations to the incoming class of fresh women of Cotty College. Oh, it is an honor to usher you into the Cotty sisterhood. Cotty holds such a special place in my heart. It's impacted me from the second I walked on campus and it still affects my life years after graduation. The Cotty Bubble was where I've earned my first college degree, but it's also where I learned more about myself. I discovered what kind of woman I wanted to be and how I was going to impact the world. And for that discovery, I am forever grateful. So who am I? Why am I standing before you? Well, 11 years ago, I was you. I was sitting in this exact same theater about to embark on this exact same journey. My name is Sarah Rafferty, and I came to Cotty in 2009 after graduating from Odessa High School in Odessa, Missouri. And I knew from the moment I stepped on campus that Cotty was unique, but I didn't know how much it was going to transform me. I spent two incredible and awe-inspiring years at Cotty. In between classes, I juggled dance and theater rehearsals, balanced my time between campus traditions and my history degree. I got to explore Paris and Spain during my second year with some of my closest friends. And near the end, I debated about staying the, the full four years because my, since my class was the first eligible for the baccalaureate degrees. But in 2011, I graduated with my associates and decided to transfer to Purdue University where I finished my degree in history focusing on women and gender studies. 
Following graduation, I began my master's at Syracuse University in museum studies. And now I am the proud, a proud founding staff member for the new International African American Museum in Charleston, South Carolina, where I am the membership manager. The museum, which opens in March of 2022, will tell the untold stories of the African American journey and will help tell a more complete account of history. My resume holds more details, but there's one common thread to the success of my work, and that's Kati. As an incoming freshwoman, I challenge you to start utilizing the strength of the Cotty faculty, alumni, and the PEOs. You have an entire support system that is cheering for your success. And looking back, I wish I would have reached out to my professors sooner in the semester because it is these relationships that will set you up for maximum success. The Cotty professors want to help. They want to be involved in your careers. Whether it was a professor that wanted us to call them at two in the morning for help with any homework, or, or helping us get our first internships, or merely just checking in to see how we were handling this transition. The Cotty faculty understands that this is a exciting but difficult time. Their lectures will educate you but inspire you, and they themselves will leave a lasting impression on you. For example, my favorite class at Cotty was Dr. Fergus's women's history class. If you get the chance to take it, take it. You will learn so much about the feminine journey in this, this country, and for me, it changed my perspective on what it meant to be a feminist. It was the class that set my entire career in motion. After that class was winding down for the semester, I went to Dr. Fergus's office, and we talked about possible career paths. She was the first person to suggest that I work in museums. And as soon as she said it, the light bulb went on, and that was it. She was the one that suggested that I reach out to the Women Air Service Pilot Museum in Sweetwater, Texas, and see if they had an internship. I walked into that museum very uncertain about my life and walked out with a career path. A few weeks later, I was graduating, and I headed down to Sweetwater as the WASP Museum's first ever intern. And while there, I met an exhilarating group of women whose story is not well known. They flew in World War II as tow targets uh, for combat training for their male counterparts. They broke the glass ceiling and made it possible for women to serve in the armed forces as active military. I'm grateful to Dr. Fergus for suggesting that I take this leap. Otherwise, I would have missed out on that opportunity. My relationship with Dr. Fergus has morphed over the years from a student-professor relationship to colleagues, and now as friends. And this story is not uncommon for Cotty alum. It is something you don't get at a larger university. I followed my mentor's path and went to Purdue University. And as much as I loved the school and my friends and the memories I made there, I don't keep in contact with those teachers the same way I keep in contact with the Cotty professors. So utilize their wisdom. Next, keep in contact with your PEO chapters and your alumna. They are your guardian angels and big sisters. The small treats and snacks made long nights of studying bearable. I can't tell you how many times I needed a chocolate fix at one in the morning and those PEO packages were there. Side note, make sure you take the time to write a thank you and just stay in touch with them. As a PEO myself, I can tell you firsthand how those thank you cards from Cotty students made those meetings or the highlight of those meetings and they don't take that much time. Those simple acts of kindness are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the PEO and Cotty networks. These women want to, Cotty, want to cultivate the next generation of Cotty grads, and most of them do it in exchange for a Cotty conversation. In 2014, I was offered an internship in Wilmington, North Carolina. It was an unpaid internship, and it was at a small house museum, and I figured I wasn't going to be able to take it until I reached out to the PEO Sisterhoods. Initially, I asked them if they knew anyone that I could rent from for a month. And the next thing I knew, I was split between four chapters and in four different homes. And the only, my only fee was to speak at each of the chapter meetings. So think forward. If you're traveling and you get into trouble or just need a place to crash, reach out. 
The sisterhood of PEO and alumna want to help. We want to find you internships and we want to put you in your dream jobs and apartments. It's our way of paying Cotty back for what it gave us. I can't tell you the number of times I've walked around with my Cotty shirt and been stopped by someone who was a, is a PEO, knows a PEO, and or was an alumna. We are a vast network. We see the state of women's colleges in this country, and they are shrinking at an alarming rate. But Cotty's the exception. It's thriving. It's growing. And a massive variable to that is the love, sweat, and support that these networks put into Cotty. You are our future, and we want to support you. But the next step is on you. Reach out to the PEO Relations and Cotty Alumni Office in Main Hall. They can get you in contact with the right woman. Find me on social media. DM me if you have questions about internships, college, campus life, or just need someone who's been through it. Also, my couch is available if any of you travel to Charleston. Use us. We're here. Use us. And finally, I want each of you to take a minute and think of the women that came before you. They may be historical figures or not. They may be famous or unknown, and they may know their impact on history, or they might have just impacted you individually. But all of them have laid the groundwork for you to be here today. It's a perfect week to start Cotty. It is the week that we celebrate the centennial of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote. It wasn't that long ago that women were fighting for the fundamental right to participate in their government. But our fight, is, our fight is still not over. It's far from over. There are too many opportunities where women have not been given an equal chance. For instance, my biggest career goal is to become the, the secretary of the Smithsonian. And in the 20 to 30 years that it will take me to get there, I hope that I am not the first woman secretary. I hope I don't have to wait that long to break that barrier. There are too many positions where we have been overshadowed and held back. And I think back to my mother and grandmothers and think, how many opportunities were they denied because of their gender? And it drives me to be the best that I can. So in closing, I challenge you to think of that woman and go into the school year with her as your driving force. Embrace all that Cotty has to offer. Opinions and thoughts are celebrated and welcomed here. Professors will challenge you to think outside the norm and, and make you approach the world differently. Cotty will test you, teach you, and empower you. And if you're willing to soak up all the knowledge from the alumni PEO networks, from your faculty, from your fellow students, and from yourself, Cotty College will graduate women who can accept the challenges that life throws at you but will also give you the strength to shatter those glass ceilings that are above all of us. So good luck in the upcoming academic year and on your future journey, and welcome to the Cotty Sisterhood. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Your story is inspiring. Your experiences demonstrate for all of our students what a Cotty College education can do for a student. We appreciate your words of wisdom. We appreciate your advice. So now I would like to introduce Dr. Joe Ann Bangs, Vice President for Academic Affairs. The signing of the Cotty Book is among the oldest and most cherished traditions at Cotty. Tonight you will be joining the original 21 students who started this tradition in 1935. The Cotty Book is made of white leather. A gold cord holds the pages together. Once you have signed your name in the book, you will proceed across the stage where you will receive a daisy. This daisy symbolizes your membership in the Cotty community. In the not too distant future, you will be given another daisy at your graduation. Just as the cords bind each page of the Cotty book together, traditions like these bind together past and future generations of Cotty students. 
Your signature in the Cadi book is your formal admittance to the learning community that is Cadi College. You are pledging your commitment to the spirit of Cadi and your willingness to uphold its ideals and standards. When Virginia Alice Cadi founded Cadi College, she established these high ideals, expectations, and principles for her school. Since then, each student has been guided by these ideals and principles. Over time, these ideals and principles became the honor system at Cadi. Tonight, when you sign the Cadi book, you're acknowledging that you, like other students before you, will strive to live up to the values of the founder and to live up to the standards embedded in the honor code. Before you stand to pledge your intent to uphold the honor code, you should understand what it means. The Cadi College Honor Code means that each of you will do all in your power to maintain the intellectual integrity of the work you and the other students undertake here at Cadi. Your obligations and responsibilities include those of understanding and observing all classroom policies and procedures regarding preparation of coursework, papers written and examinations taken, observing all library policies and procedures, and respecting your fellow students' rights and responsibilities regarding their academic work. The Honor Code also requires that you uphold all student life policies, including those in the residence halls. The Honor Code means that we trust each other, treat each other with respect and consideration. It means that each of us, as members of the Cadi Learning Community, makes this solemn commitment to Cadi's Honor Code and that any violation of the Honor Code provisions will be taken seriously, and consequences will be assigned as outlined in the student handbook. Please refer to page five of the program and follow along as I read the beginning paragraphs of the Honor Code. I read these words as a representative of the Cadi community. The Honor Code of Cadi College defines and expresses the ethical spirit in which we, the members of the Cadi community, pursue the education of women. Recognizing that a community of learning cannot function well without respect for basic moral order, we also understand that the furthering of excellence requires still greater commitments. Thus, in addition to basic moral principles, we also affirm Virginia Alice Cotty's emphasis on the development of excellent, excellent personal character and the more specific ethical standards of the professional associations that oversee the conduct and quality of higher education. So now please rise and join me in reciting aloud your pledge to uphold the honor code using the words printed in bold. We, the members of the Cadi College community, commit ourselves to act with personal responsibility, academic honesty and integrity of word, moral respect for persons and their property, ethical concern for the good of the college community and the broader society of humankind. Embracing these ideals, we aim for the ongoing fulfillment of the mission of this college as a center of higher humane learning. You may be seated. Now that you've stated your pledge to uphold the, uphold the Cadi Honor Code, we will begin the tradition. Please come forward, don't forget to bring your pens, and you'll sign your name as I say each of your, you'll come and sign the book as I say your names. Chloe Kennedy. Trinity Knox. Caitlin Lamphere. Caitlin Legrand. Caroline Little. Haley Lockwood Peterson. Jaden Lozano. Keegan Masterson. Cameron McCracken.
Abigail Mefford. Tegan Minares. Rochelle Moreno Barnes. Caitlin Morgan. Ariana Myers Arendt. Virginia Norton. Emma Nodick. Pandora Ando. Maggie Ann Otto. Rebecca Pachter. Georgia Phillips. Isabel Prismas. Tori Rasmussen. Zakaya Robertson. Robertson. Go ahead, keep going. Yanis Rodriguez. Sabrina Rollins. Emily Roseman. Elizabeth Ruth. Dominica Santa Maria. Samus Schuler. Abigail Silvers. Sasha Smith. Wake Smith. <laughs> Make sure your hand sanitized after you use my pen. Now I've completely lost track of who we're on. I'm not kidding. Please say your name for me. Thank you. Cameron Somerville. Giselle Souza Suarez. Mariah Starks. Thalia Steele.
Ashton Sugg. Ibby Swords. Elizabeth Thomas. Serenity Torkelson. Kiani Tung. Zoe Yurig. Alexis Ward. Eden Weatherall. Jenna Wilson. Katie Wright. Caitlin Wyatt. Elsa Yeager. Brina Zappi. Welcome to Cadi. Students, we are so pleased that you are here and thrilled that you chose Cadi College. Congratulations to our first year students for joining the Cadi community with your pledge of commitment to the honor code. Before we adjourn, I would like to thank everyone who is supporting our students by viewing the live stream of this event. We really wish that you could have been here in person to celebrate with our newest students. We will conclude by listening to the words of the alma mater and you'll see them on the screen behind me. Students, please rise. Hail to thee, our alma mater, hail to thee, our Cadi dear, our beacon bright, thy holy light shall protect us far and near. Thy daughters we shall be, and loyal heir to thee, we are proud to be a part of thee, hail Cadi see. Like a streamlet flowing onward to the ocean's mighty bed, our life shall be because of thee and a worthy goal ahead. We'll sing thy praise afar, 